Well, a network can be, it can show itself in many ways. I mean, it could, it could, it can be um, a social network on the web, which is the way most people think of networks. Uh, but that's only a small part of it. Uh, it could be a professional network where people exchange information, say about job opportunities. But much more important, the real uh, way in which networks are important and is in every people's uh, everyday lives. We're all connected on our real life social networks. We have fam family, friends, work colleagues, uh, journalists we may, may particularly favour. And these all form part of different networks. And each of us uses different networks in different contexts as a reference group when we're thinking about a problem, thinking about making a decision. Uh, we, we vary our networks, we, we vary uh, the people we think about and what they've done uh, when we're thinking of making a decision ourselves. So networks are deeply rooted in our everyday lives in, in the economy and in society. Um, well, networks can often produce really quite um, perverse, re apparently perverse re um, effects from of so-called rational actions. So one of the examples I give in the book is the behaviour of um, English soccer fans in the 1990 World Cup uh, when they were feared as hooligans and so the, all the games were played in Italy but England was confined to the island of Sardinia which felt and, and the police were very successful until one evening all the fans gathered with the intention of rioting and they were faced by a huge number of police heavily armed truncheons shields also with revolvers and a number of fans made attempts to incite the fans to become a mob and charge the police and that failed and the police moved around and so forth until the police captain tiring of all this took out his revolver and fired live ammunition into the air now you would think but it's a, as a sound when live ammunition was discharged the fans immediately began to destroy property and attack the police because it was a signal this transformed them from a group of individuals who wanted to have a riot and they suddenly became fused into a network of a mob who did indeed riot. So the very thing which, would, which a rational person would think would cause them to disperse actually had completely opposite consequence. So that's one of the things, that incentives don't always operate in the way which uh, the policymaker, uh, in, in this case the police captain, intend. Once we get network effects, they can swamp conventional approaches. But we also observe, because of this self-reinforcing uh, point, once something becomes popular, people see it's popular and are then more inclined to choose it themselves um, rather than alternatives, simply because other people have chosen it. So we do observe quite um, very dramatically unequal outcomes in situations which are increasingly pervasive in the modern world where network effects are an important part of the decisions people make in that particular context. Well, I think the, the core message is, is that public policy, we need a completely different perspective on public policy. Incentives, yes, they are important, they always will be, but we have to think about problems arising through people copying or imitating behaviour on networks. Let me take the financial crisis. Um, it was a problem because, uh, first of all, I mean, at one minute, banks were happy to lend to each other, and then suddenly, across the network of banks, pessimism spread, and suddenly doubts about the viability of each other's banks um, spread across this network, and bank lending dried up, and we had a credit crunch, and that was a harbinger of the credit crisis. It was a network effect. Um, unless we try and think, appreciate it this way, uh, on networks, when a bank, when Lehman's collapsed, it was a potential network effect, which wasn't built in to any of the policies or regulations that politicians had devised um, that might spread across a network. That's how we have to think of the world. We're ultimately driven by network effects, by copying, imitating, uh, ways things spread across our networks. And it's a completely different, we need a completely different way of thinking about policy.